Alright, hey everyone, so we're here in a keep siege. There is actually order here in this uh, scenario. Wouldn't look like it because this guy just keeps getting meleeed by the same hulk. <laughs> yeah, let's help him out. I. Uh, you moved too far away. So here's the impractical that. Uh, oh, what the fuck? What the fuck? Uh, orchid ram. I don't really like the look of the orc ram. Take on this uh, little guy right here. I mean, as long as I'm being uh, protected. I turned down the graphics a bit because it was kind of a uh, pain in the ass to see what was going on. And we got a bunch of wannabe DPSs. Uh, you can tell that by a chosen with a uh, uh, two-handed weapon. Now, the thing with it, with um, uh, tanks, you'll never do as good of DPS as you, as a pure DPS. Uh, trying to find out who's the target. As you can see, this is kind of one reason why I, uh, I put it on group. But, but you can see, uh, even as group, uh, this is complete chaos. <laughs> And no, no puns were intended. This guy. Doesn't matter if they were behind us. Oh, oh yes, nice, a blue bag. I'll pick up some silver. No, I'll pick up some gold. I mean, I, I'm still getting plenty of, uh, what's it called, soldier medallions. <laughs> yeah, he's accepted his fate. Uh, tanks uh, throwing weapons do like uh, double if not triple damage I can't remember what the thing is if the target is below 50% uh, health oh man I was so close to a red and golden oh epic and golden oh well why no one res me <laughs> So the green skins and dwarfs, uh, since their zones are actually broken up into two parts, see if I hit this, uh, you'll have the bad lines in this. You can pick up the killing players quest uh, two times for this zone. I really shouldn't have used that one. That was bad on my behalf. <laughs> Yeah, 
NPCs don't uh, move that often. Jeez, one away, two away from the gold. <laughs> I got pretty lucky though on my roll. I guess I dotted up a couple of players, or I did the most damage, or I did, like, probably the most damage to the boss. See, there's another thing why you don't want to be a DPS as a tank. He's a DPS. Uh, but, um, as a tank, if you're taunting the boss and the boss is meleeing you, you are getting actual, um, credit. Uh, you're getting far more credit than you would as a DPS. Hopefully the order is going to sit here at their war camp like they usually do and try to do a one final defense. Alright, it would suck if they don't because that means I can't turn in either one of these quests. Which means I'll have to remove them. I know you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just keep them and complete them next time? Well, because uh, you usually don't have the... Unless the... The, the Dwarven in... Uh, what's it called? Yeah, here they are. They're, they're coming for that one last defense. I love this. But uh, what it is with the um, uh, chaos... Only I've, se I've seen the chaos in the Elfland actually have this back-to-back... Defense and offensive thing. I've never seen the uh, Dwarven Lands have it uh, So, you know, you want to come in you want to get the quest you want to complete it and then leave ASAP uh, I hate how they can drop those mines so far away from them. That's kind of bullshit. Oh You like the fact that you can no longer attack? Probably not. <laughs> oh. Now, I'm actually surprised uh, I'm uh, higher on the list with dwarves. Usually, uh, it's um, order. I mean, for uh, talk, uh, players uh, killed and that stuff, it's uh, what's it called? It's um, Empire, then Dwarves, and then Elves uh, at the very end. Okay, we're pushing way too far. Good, they're fighting back. They got ballsy again. Now, the reason why I'm throwing mine at such a long range, mine actually will slow the target down. Um, it, if it hits them from behind. Oh, really? That wasn't what I needed? This is the one thing I kind of uh, wonder what's going on. It's because... Sometimes you'll get credit for your warband uh, taking the final blow, and other times you won't. 
Oh boy, here's the heroes. <laughs> the game that was in live uh, we had, um in the lower tiers the uh, chaos of uh, destruction you got so uh, stompy that we could actually kill the heroes in the uh, camp uh, what was it called the, the enemy war camp so they had to drastically buff the war heroes <laughs> when I say war heroes you know the gods of the war camp because we would be inside the the orders uh, war camp in uh, tier one and tier two uh, this is so funny they keep pushing forward and then they keep getting driven back that guy's like uh yeah nope i'm out of here <laughs> So I've changed up my things as you can see we have the brute force it's probably the one you should always have tanks have a toughness one which I'm jealous of but the tanks they should be like I really wish uh, there was a uh, what's it called a, a uh, I shouldn't have put that on him but oh well There we go. So like I said, sometimes it will give you credit for the kill, sometimes it won't. I don't understand it. It's like, did Warband 2 get the final blow and that's why I don't get the credit for it? It's probably what it is. Welcome back. So, as you can see, we're here with uh, a warband. We're uh, not quite in the same zone as we were last time. I had crashed a desktop. That's why the sudden cut wasn't anything intentional. And when I got back, I got back just in time for the zone to flip. So all was all that was happening was we were leaving the zone and we were coming back. But now we've gotten some order fighting our forces. So. You know, I figured might as well record this because, you know, that's what you guys are here for. You're here for the PvP. You want the PvP. Look at that massive force of PvP. And this is one thing I loved about uh, Warhammer that I don't think... Besides, um, what's it called? Mythic Online it captured. Dark Age of Camelot, sorry, it wasn't Mythic Online. Uh, Dark Age of Camelot, I think, captured uh, the open world PvP very well. I don't think Guild Wars 2 did a good job because, you know, they claim that they are an action based game, but. Really, all you do is you grab a ranged class and you auto lock on to everyone. You just play it like World of Warcraft. <laughs> now, people are probably going to disagree with me, and that's perfectly fine with me. But I really don't think World of Warcraft, I mean, uh, Guild Wars 2 is as good as a lot of people hype it up to be. That's just personally my personal opinion. You can love it, you can hate it, I don't care. I mean, I think we all have rights to our own opinions, and that's why, you know, you can love it. And if you love it, good for you. It's just not my personal game. I think uh, probably one of the more problems is, is I like playing melee classes like this. And uh, with Guild Wars 2, melee is extremely punished and requires you to have, you know, spot on reflexes. And I have severe nerve damage. I don't have that. I cannot have that. So it will never, never in a million years uh, be a game I can play. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I will show you some of the range classes. I mean, I love the Zealot. 
I love being a little heal bot. I mean, literally, I have my thing set up that all I can, all I do is healing. Sweet. So, I can now wear my boots. Let's see if we get the nice little uh, reward for wearing the boots. And as you can see, uh, these boots look real nice. And let me show you what the old ones looked like. Alright, so here's the obliterators. You know, pretty basic. But then you go with these and wow, those are very, very spiky. And as you can see, I do have a full set uh, for uh, the tier uh, 3 uh, armor set. And I'm going to wear it because if you look, the final piece is a 5% crit chance. Speaking of crit chances, so here's, I was showing off this thing, so my brute force has leveled up, see, because I've leveled up. It doesn't scale with zone, unfortunately. At least I don't think it does. But here's the thing, I, I told you I was going down the path of suffering. This is one of the things you can unlock in the path of suffering, and I love this, because this pretty much means if I dot someone up with my, um, in Venom Blades, they will have a hard time either killing me or heal out healing my damage. So I love using um, this on healers. So, you know, the healer is going to be constantly trying to heal. But they won't be able to with them. Uh, because Respects to your host. my kiss of death it has worn off, but I need to put it back on. They won't be able to because of the kiss of death effect. And the only reason they were able to is because they were getting lucky and getting a lot of crit heals. Which was pretty much countering yeah, the kiss of death. But now that crit heals is not an option, they can't really do that. already be taunting me. So what happened there was someone with high um, initiative spotted me and detaunted me. Or taunted me. As a tank, that is one of your big roles in uh, PvP is taunting other players. Now you're probably like, well, the taunt does didn't make you uh, suddenly target the tank. No, but uh, it reduced my uh, outgoing DPS by 50% or something like that. I can't quite remember what it is. It is a really big detrimental to, to be taunted. Even more is if the enemy you're targeting um, detaunts you at the same time that you are taunted, you now lose a hundred percent of your damage or something. It, I don't know if it stacks like that, but you'll probably lose fifty percent of whatever you had left. So you'll probably lose an actually like more of a seventy-five percent of your damage. And that's one thing why I love tanks with shields and stuff, because you know if they have the shield, they're going to be having very high initiative, because initiative uh, prevents you from being crit hit, it also allows you to see stealth enemies, and they're going to have high toughness, something the two-handed warriors uh, do not have. I shouldn't say warriors, but, you know, the tanks uh, don't have. They don't have gear. They're building gear that is, you know, strength and weapon skill. And they're going to lack uh, wounds. They're going to lack toughness. They're going to lack initiative. They're going to be really, really crappy DPSs. It's like, if you want a two-handed sword or axe and that stuff, you might as well start playing as uh, a chopper. They are a DPS that goes ham with the two-handed axes. Now, I understand, for Chaos, you might be screwed because they're, 
uh, choppers are like the only DPS in the game that can use a two-hander, and if you want a two-hander sword, you can't uh, really be playing a chopper, so it kind of sucks to be you type deal. And I understand that feeling. I used to play as a Chaos uh, two-handed uh, swordsman, but uh, in the end of the day, I was actually less useful. I was not getting rewarded. I was not getting anything. I was being punished heavily by the game. And when I went tanks back, I was getting gear off the wazoo. I mean, the game pretty much uh, punishes you if you want to play as a two-hander. That's why when you see, like, two-handed tank gear dropping, uh, like this guy, to, oh, gear dropping for tanks, you'll see a uh, two-handed warrior is uh, uh, getting it. Because uh, they don't get a lot of tokens. They don't get a lot of uh, renown. They don't get a lot of, a lot of rewards. The game is seriously really anti-two-handed tanks. I wish that wasn't the case, but that's how the game is kind of programmed. You go and you build a two-handed tank and you're not going to get so many rewarded. You build a two-handed or a sword and build tank and you're going to be getting uh, rewards off the wazoo. It's the same with healers. If you play as a DPS healer, you're not going to get much love from the game. You play as a heal healer and you're going to be so powerful. Uh, they did change, I did find out recently that they did change the, um, what's it called, the, the renown, so you can get more renown than your level. I went into a, uh, scenario with, like, a level 2 Sork, and I came out, like, level 5 at renown, level 3, uh, level. And this was from a lost game. I can only imagine how many points I would have gotten if I won Probably like level 7 Renown and level 4 <laughs> uh, level. I know, it's a little weird set trying to say r level and Renown level because it just doesn't come off as natural. We got a couple of order people. Whoa, there's a lot. Yeah, they were taking the long way around me. And you can see the targets are uh, attacking that poor healer. Now you can see now the healer's dead life is just going down far more than when those two tanks were attacking him. Even though one of the tanks was a two-handed uh, wielding one, you could see he was not getting the DPS he needed to outheal the healer. Then I come along and just start melting that healer's life points. I know you probably was like, well, you also have the kiss of death and the anti-crit, which is pretty much means the anti-healer spec. Yeah, I do have that. Oh man, I can't wait to hit level 30. I just recently unlocked this. Is this the one? Nope. Which one? This one. This one. Three percent crit chance per point per combo point, basically. That means having five combo points that you are sitting at a fifteen percent crit chance. This kind of makes it where you know if you're like playing like a rogue in World of Warcraft, you don't want to be using finishers. <laughs> I mean, think about if a rogue had that type of passive. They probably would be a lot stronger than the ones using fin. And my finishers are not doing really that much more damage than my openers, which is probably one of the big uh, crappy parts. Probably a big reason why I don't use them. As you can see, they're kind of shitty. I mean, granted, this is two attacks versus one attack. So I probably should be using them more often. I mean, getting uh, 600 damage and then removing the enemy's uh, wounds by 720. 
really good thing. Really good. I should be using it more often, but I'm just kind of more in a frenzy of spamming 1-2 with E. Speaking of that, here's my E. So I have all my skills of Paths of Suffering. I believe that Spirit Damage is the Order's second highest uh, resistance. I know Corporeal is um, Sork's big magic dealer. And anything your Sork or Bright Wizard is doing is going to be your fa the enemy's faction's highest resistance. So like, come here and you'll see. My Elemental is... Uh, really high my corporeal is second high and then my spiritual is at the lowest i believe that's because uh order doesn't have many classes with spiritual they're more of elemental and corporeal we are more corporeal and spiritual and not so much elemental And that's just how the gear is naturally set up. It, as you'll see, you'll get a lot of uh, elemental resistance, a lot of... Uh, uh, sp well, this one gives... These give quite a bit of spiritual. I'm not quite a fan of that, but as you can see right here, a, a lot of elemental and corporeal. I'm going more with a defensive build for uh, a set jewelry. Because my weapons and armor is going to be, is pretty much built for the offensive aspect. And I love that uh, toughness. I don't care who you are, toughness is probably one of the best stats in the game. I know uh, right now a lot of people are building armor, but the problem with is if you're fighting someone like a witch elf or a witch hunter and that stuff, they're just going to melt right through your armor. As you can see, I already have a 27%. To, that means a quarter of a person's armor is gone when I leap on them. If my weapon skill was higher, it would be even more devastating. I mean, in tier 1, you saw my witch hunter was having a 40% armor pin. 40%! That's pretty big. That's a can opener right there. Also, we have skills like this. If the attack from behind, you ignore the target's armor. So, you know, armor's not really that big of a deal. Also, armor does not protect against magic damage. And every class in the game has some type of magic damage. Well, since we're kind of just waiting for the Siege of the Keep to go on, I'll end this episode here because this is kind of boring. I'll see you guys next time.